Hey, single plane golfers, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be covering a lot of information about the simple single plane swing. Make sure you subscribe. Today, we're gonna to discuss the backswing. It's not what you think it is. It's actually almost two parts blended into one. I wanna show you today what the backswing is really doing so you can accomplish a leverage position at the top of the swing. So here's what's going on in the motion of the backswing. Mo called this in and up. That's the way when I asked him, hey, tell me about your backswing, what does it feel like? It's in and up. It's almost two movements that are occurring in the swing. Now I've measured this, and it's pretty fascinating when you look at what really goes on in the entire motion from the starting point at address to the top of the backswing position, what is actually happening as far as the body movement. When I teach, I teach the body movement and the correct positions of the body because really when you hit your positions, that's really the secret to making sure you can become a great ball striker is your body must go into the correct positions. If you don't go into the correct positions, you end up coming over the top, making mistakes, and having some kind of compensation in your movement. So here's what the backswing is. From a, an ideal starting position, the backswing is a, a rotation. So I basically have a relationship to the golf club at the starting point. The, the backswing is a rotation of everything together. It's a pelvis rotation and a torso rotation as my body stays in its side bend. So it's a rotation to about right here, everything rotates together. Now, it absolutely feels like you're rotating the exact same amount from here to here. But what's fascinating about the backswing rotation is that when you measure, if I start here, and I measure my body position, so right here, my torso is a few degrees open, my pelvis is, is square to a few degrees open. When I turn to right here, my torso, my upper body, is about 50 degrees closed, rotated this way. My pelvis is only about 20. So this part of my body is moving twice as much as this part of my body, which is a fascinating thing because it doesn't feel like that. This is what I always teach my students. I always tell them, hey, look, you can't feel what you do because this stuff's happening, it's going too fast, and you, your body, you just don't, you're not aware of what's really, really going on. That's why I like to measure some things. So what's happening here, I want you to watch my lead shoulder from this point forward. So remember, I'm about, I'm about 50 degrees closed with my torso. When I, start, when I go to the top of my backswing, you're not gonna see a lot of movement in that lead shoulder. See that? But look how far the club travels to the top. How is that happening? How is the club traveling? Watch how far the club head goes. It's going three or four feet. This club's traveling three or four feet into the backswing. This is hardly moving at all. It's happening because you're getting hand and arm action and a little bit of torso movement. Only about 25 degrees of torso movement. So here's what's happening now. You got this first movement where everything moves together, feels like everything's together, and a second movement where it feels like it's mostly just arms and hands. So there's two succinct feelings here that I get when I swing a golf club. Mo said that it felt like it was going in all together and then up. And then you gotta blend that together. So watch it when I just kinda do it in regular motion here. You can kinda see it now. See how my lead shoulder goes to here and then it, and it just, my arms comes up? There's that upward motion, and that's that hand moving up like this and the arm folding to that on plane at the top of the backswing position. So what my point here is that what I see people do is they over-rotate too much. They go to the top of the swing and they're turned like this. They're trying to over-rotate, and their arms never have a chance to make the upward on plane motion. So I'm always trying to limit the way the upper body moves so the arms can actually have their place in the backswing. So watch when I strike a ball here, you're gonna easily see how that inward motion occurs and then you get this little upward motion right here, then I'm gonna transition and come down and strike it. So it's an in and up. In, lead shoulder doesn't move a lot, up to the top. And that should be the feeling of your backswing and if you sequence that together, you're gonna to get the proper sequence of the backswing, which is another topic we need to discuss, is the timing of a golf swing.